What is up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to Two Real Games. My name is Paul. And I'm Mike. This is Kate. And we are doing TLDR, and this is a very special TLDR. It's our first one where we talk about literature, an American classic, To Kill a Mockingbird. And we are headed directly to the courthouse. Which how is fitting. Quite a, how fitting. This is the GTA model of the Los Angeles courthouse, and uh, this is where we're going to talk about the book while we commit horrible atrocities in the name of literature. As you can see, I'm dressed as Atticus Finch. I am Boo Radley. And I'm yeah. Miscellaneous Southern Lady. <laughs> <laughs> because the clothing choices in GTA are for shit. <laughs> Only for oh. ladies. Yeah. All right. So uh, we all read To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, and had you guys, are... had you read what? this before or is this your first time reading it? I had not read it before. Um, just the way things kind of worked out at my school. Like it was required reading, but I switched English programs like halfway through my school career. Uh, and so they hadn't read it yet where I was. Nice. Uh, in school, and um, and then when I switched over to the new program, they had already read it. Okay, so you, you missed it. What about you, Mike? Um, I read it in high school, and then I read it again later, many, many years later with my wife. Uh, I guess it would be about ten years ago. All right. And I had read it in high school, but not since. So we kind of ran the whole gamut of uh, familiarity with this book, it seems like. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't even seen the movie uh, or anything like that. Um, I did look at some screenshots of the movie so I could get my outfit for Atticus. Mike, this is your car, right? It should not blow it up. Yeah, don't blow that up. Although, if you do, yeah. No, that will cost me money. Though it's, from the looks of it, it won't cost me a lot of money. <laughs> there's, there's a lot going on under the uh, hood there. Okay, cool. So, uh, I guess my first impression this, of this uh, book was, holy crap, racism. Which yeah. is a fitting impression, given the time period that it's taking place in. Yeah. And not just racism, but there was, like, casual racism. And, yeah. and, and just explicit blatant. racism. Yeah. Yeah, and that was, was a thing I noted as well. There was, like, two really distinct kinds of racism in the book, like a casual kind of uh, socially accepted racism and the kind of extreme racism that had sort of gone out of fashion at that point, but was still pretty prevalent in southern cities. Yeah, I, you know, it was it was shocking, like, to be perfectly honest. Um, and, and I understand why a lot of, uh, at least from that point of view... Uh, the use of the the eponious N word it's pretty prevalent. Uh, was pretty prevalent throughout the book, and I can understand why people might uh, hesitate to want to have children read that book. And that um, is why it's on a lot of the banned book lists so far. Yeah. Um, yeah. And not because of the subject matter necessarily, but just because of the language that is used. Um, though, to be fair, it's super accurate language as far as dialogue at the time. Like, that's the way people talk. They just use that word. And right, if you lived in Alabama in the 30s, that was a pretty uh, widespread term. Yeah, even black people at the time used that word, uh, you know, self, self-referentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was a different. Definitely takes place in a different era than uh, than we live in now, and what's acceptable at that time was very different from what's acceptable now. Yeah. So, um, so that was something that uh, took some getting used to for me. Like, um... and the other thing that they ta they touch on, although way more subtly in the book. I mean, obviously, the major theme of the book uh, is racism and uh, people fighting mm -hmm. against that. But um, a little more subtly, they also talk about like the position of women in society and uh, sexism and that sort of thing. You see Scout kind of uh, fighting against the position of women as the way they're expected to behave a lot of the time throughout the book. And the characters that she really trusts and therefore the reader really trusts tend to be those who kind of buck that uh, expectation of society for women. 
<laughs> there was also a lot of class stuff, you know, uh, class uh, differences going on in there. Um, yeah, we don't talk to those people. Yeah. Um, right, yeah, the, like, the whole well, white trash mentality. They're cunning hams, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which was a totally acceptable explanation for why anybody would behave anyway. It's just like, your name was enough to earn you a place in society, whether or not you as an individual uh, had anything to do with that. Yeah, and then there was the characters that would even embrace it, where it was uh, the one gentleman who, you know, who was in interrelation, interracial relationships, uh, always pretended to be drinking, uh, because then people could just like blame the way he acted on his drinking, right. um, explain away his behavior, his yeah, lack of it, racism. It, yeah, his lack of racism. Um, it was. So overall, I thought it was a great book. I mean, I can completely understand why it's considered an American classic uh, and and the pinnacle of American literature. Um, some of the themes it touched on, you know, are uh, kind of scarily relevant still today. Yeah, yeah. I wish I really Absolutely. wish we could say that this book is not at all relevant in this day and time, given that it's been uh, how many years? I mean, it was written in the '60s, is that right? Yep. Um, yeah. So, and I wish that I could say that all of the racism and, and tensions that it touches on were totally uh, hard to fathom these days, but a lot of it is very active still in this time. Yeah. You know, I full disclosure here. I went into this particular book. Uh, with the intention of being a devil's advocate on, you know, this is not a, it's not nearly as relevant as it used to be. And yeah, I came away pretty much the exact opposite. Yeah, yeah it's, it's almost more relevant now. Like the, the fact that the, the environment that they were portraying uh, is from the 1930s. It's almost... Um, you know, it's like 85 years ago. Yeah. God, that's um, scary. <laughs> it's, it's been literally 85 years of uh, what we consider, you know, progression. Uh, and it, it really hasn't changed a whole lot. Uh, you know, we might not use certain language, but black people nowadays they are still just as marginalized um, mm -hmm. as they were back then. It's just, you know, okay, yeah, well, we, we, we have to let them into our schools, but we don't have to give them the jobs they need, they deserve um, or anything like that. It, it, it's sad. It's really sad that we're still at that point. And, uh, you know, we had a, we had a black president uh, and it really didn't affect much. Um, except to, to bring the people who still act like the Yugles, uh out of the woodwork and give them a voice, unfortunately. Um, so one of the things I found really uh, that a lot of people seem to miss about the book or don't stop to think about the book is the title itself. Um, I thought it was interesting because the title implies uh, a lot of... Um, the title implies that uh, innocent creatures should never be harmed, uh, no matter what. And then you read this book where um, the whole book, throughout the whole book, the most innocent people in the book are constantly being abused uh, by the society, by other people. Mm -hmm. um, Tom, who is literally crippled uh, and socially crippled by you know being a, considered a second-class citizen because of his skin color is murdered at, you know, both his, um, his per personality, what's the word I'm looking for here? His character, character. Thank you. Uh, and then also physically, um, and then also you see Boo, Boo Radley, Arthur Radley, uh, the same thing. He's kind of a harmless, uh, social, uh, outcast and he's treated like the boogeyman. So I always yeah. found that kind of an interesting thing from the title that a lot of people never stop to think about the title after they open the book. Boo Radley was like the uh, the 1930s version of a World of Warcraft player. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a shut-in. 
He's just a shut-in. Like he's right, like, but he's he's friendly. Yeah, the internet and the video him. games. He would have been fine. Like <laughs> <laughs> probably wouldn't have even come out. I thought it was interesting, uh, kind of one of the things that was touched on briefly in the book, speaking of like people being distracted by technology, uh, you know, like video games and movies and things like that, is even back then people were like, yeah, I didn't hear those kids getting kidnapped and potentially murdered because I was, all, everybody was listening to their radio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Technology yeah, has always been the great distraction. Yeah. I was like, yeah, everybody's got their head buried in their radio. You can't, you know. <laughs> They're not paying attention to the world around them. <laughs> um, I thought it was interesting the way Harper Lee was able to switch. Several times throughout the book, she kind of switches from uh, the child's point of view to kind of an adult remembering point of view. And she does yeah. it so smoothly and so subtly that I don't didn't even always catch when she was doing it because my mind just made the transition without thinking about it. Which I think shows her uh, prowess as a writer because that can be a really jarring transition if you're not careful with it. Yeah, she's super adept writer. Um, so, Mike, did you do the audiobook again? Yep. Did the audiobook. Uh, Who it read was, it? It was really good. Uh, it was actually narrated by Sissy Spacek uh, of huh. the original Carrie movie fame. And. Huh. Uh, she just nailed that southern accent. It's <laughs> pretty excellent. That's cool. I read the an old, battered, partially highlighted copy that I found at a half price books. Yeah, I did the same. It was actually kind of interesting to read somebody's like school notes as you were going along and just yeah. like somebody else's thoughts and all the margins. I actually found it kind of an interesting literary experience. <laughs> yeah. A lot of history in the pages for sure. Who knows how many grade schools that book has been through. And uh, I think... I think you mentioned, uh, both of you mentioned that you hadn't seen the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I have, several times actually. And uh, so reading through the book, uh, or listening to the book in our case, it was interesting how my mind was just substituting the actors from the movie, you know, their voices for everything yeah. in the book. Well, Gregory Peck, he, uh, uh, he's not a very good actor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a lot of people listening to this are like, who? <laughs> uh, yeah. If you don't know who Gregory Peck is, you need to go find out who Gregory Peck is. because Gregory Go check it Peck out. And if you have to badass. watch the... if I, I haven't watched the movie, Mike. If you had have to read the book for school, would you recommend also watching the movie? Is there a lot of diversion from the book? Is it similar? Uh, there's not a lot of diversion. There's a lot of stuff that they leave out in the movie. Uh, the some of the struggles that uh, uh, Scout has with uh, uh, expectations of being a girl and whatnot. A lot of that's left out. the The main story for the movie is definitely the trial. There's a little bit of the coming of age stuff with uh, Scout but uh, it's mostly the trial mm -hmm. that's fair you have to leave out a lot of the small details like that when you're making a movie for time oh my damn overall still held up as a really enjoyable book as an adult um, it wasn't obviously wasn't written as a kid's book it wasn't the original intention of the book to be for kids, I don't think that she had any idea when she wrote it, because she, it, it's not autobiographical, but it is very similar to a lot of things that happened in Harper Lee's own life, um, mm -hmm. and the character bears a lot of resemblance to her own uh, self, so I, I think that it was written for adults, although it is absolutely readable to younger uh, readers. It's not a difficult read by any means, although it has some slightly aged and slightly uh, southern language that it makes it a little hard if you're not say if you're from another country then you maybe don't know the southernisms it's it's a bit uh, you might have to look some things up 
Because yeah. their language is just dated and localized. Oh, very so, localized. Yeah. I, I thought that that was really good. Like, you know, I've read a lot of genre fiction um, where, you know, they write the accents into the characters. Like, you know, of course all the dwarves talk like Scottish people and so on and so forth. Um, so I always like it when people write the, the way people talk. Mm. Yeah. We totally see that. Um, really, it did hold up well, though. It was a really enjoyable book, both as an adult and as a young teen when I read it originally. Um, I probably lawyer. didn't like it. <laughs> probably didn't like it as much as I should have the first time through because somebody was making me read it, and nobody appreciates that when they're a teenager. Uh, but overall, it's held up really well. I'm a lawyer. <laughs> You're over there with a main gun, and I've just got a six shooter. I was using a musket earlier. I had to make up for it. <laughs> so, what would you say is the overall um, moral or theme of this the book? <laughs> Anything specific gonna, that you I, took away from it? I'm gonna let you guys answer that first. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Paul. Um. Well, it was to me like uh, you know I read it once. Uh, I didn't. Like, you know, of course I was reading it with the idea of talking about it later. Um, but, you know, it just came off as a coming-of-age story. Like, ultimately, like, she lost her innocence um, in the face of this, yeah, witnessing the, tr the horrible crime of somebody paying for a crime they didn't do simply because of the color of their skin. Um, yeah. and then herself being attacked as a, uh, as a symptom of that, um, is, as a way of one person being mad at somebody using their own family, uh, to get back at them. So kind of a, a loss of innocent story as far as you're concerned. Yeah. Concern. Yeah. It's pretty which similar is... to what I was coming up with, which was that it very much gives you the mentality life's not fair. Uh... <laughs> maybe not the most uplifting message but it really is what it you know to me it comes across very much life's not fair uh you know but that that it doing the right thing is still worth doing even though life's not going to be fair it's not always going to be kind to you for doing the right thing life's going to be super unkind to you in a lot of situations for doing the right thing especially when it comes uh to matters of race definitely definitely but that was still the message i saw out of it what about you mike uh, the message was, if you aren't a middle-class white male, life sucks, and you need to get used to it. Yeah, Jesus. that's probably not untrue. Because <laughs> nobody had a really happy ending there. Um, yeah, there's, they're not holding hands and, and singing songs together by the end. Yeah, sure. I mean, it, it wasn't, you know, a dark and depressing ending, but it definitely was not a pleasant closure to anybody's storyline. Nothing? Um, I mean, Ow. you had... You had... <laughs> you had uh, I'm uh, a middle-class white male! <laughs> <laughs> wow, way to bring it home. Hey, is everybody else's bug game? Because these cops keep shooting me. Oh, uh, terrible. <laughs> well, I'm a recluse, so... Uh... Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, no, it's terrible. Yeah, oh, Jesus. I mean, Atticus and his son Jim were just disillusioned with the justice system at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Scout was disillusioned with that on top of having to deal with the fact that she was being forced out of her uh, tomboy, eh, tomboy persona, you know, personality, not persona. Mm -hmm. and yeah, that's who she was. Yeah, I mean, she was a tomboy, That's and she was comfortable with that, and society's like, no you need to come in here and be part of the ladies. Yeah. So, you know, 
And yeah. Alright. But yeah, just um, nothing good. Not not an uplifting book for sure. Very heavy subject matter. Um, and if you're if you're being <laughs> made to read it for school, it's a quick read. It uh, doesn't take very long, uh, and it is actually very interesting to compare it to nowadays and and so long ago when you would mm -hmm. think that there would be nothing to compare. But uh, I think it's actually a pretty good read. So pay attention. It's it's a, a good one that you will appreciate later on. Yeah, I, I definitely think that it, um, everybody, like, it should be required reading. I understand why it was, you know, why it's banned for the, just for the language. But I don't think that we should, uh, one, I don't think we should change the book to make that, uh, uh, more palatable. Ooh, nice. Um, and I also don't think that we should ban it. I think that we should read it specifically because it's using that kind of language and it needs to be framed in a way that people understand uh, what it means and how it can hurt people. Right, and yeah. how that casual sort of racism can be harmful to society. Yeah. Exactly. Alright. All right. Um, guys, guys, we did culture. We did culture! Totally culture. I'm a lawyer! <laughs> Adam <laughs> I'm a real lawyer. Yeah. Adam Raposa. Adam Raposa. <laughs> All right. If you don't know who Adam Raposa is, go look that up on YouTube. You will not regret it. Yeah, you will not regret it. He's a real right. lawyer. So uh, that was our first TLDR for classic literature. I'm sure we'll have another one in the near future, but our next book will be our first uh, modern fiction book, and that will be... Uh, we're all going to read and talk about uh, John Dies at the end. Which also has a movie made of it that I have not seen. Yeah. So, we'll check that out. Maybe this time we'll watch the movie before we do the thing so we can prepare it really well. I'm still going to read the book first, but I would like to watch the movie yeah. as well. Yeah, read the book. Then right. we can yeah, make some comparisons. Yeah, absolutely. I already started reading it and already it's amazing. So, um... By the way, that book apparently falls into the category... No, comedy... Horror sci-fi. How many horror sci-fi? That sounds amazing. Everybody <laughs> should click subscribe so that they'll know when that, that, that one comes out and you can check it out. So, Click like if you liked our take on uh, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Uh, and follow us on the Twitters. Uh, we're on Facebook too, but uh, we're much funnier on the Twits. And Instagram. We're on there now too. We're on Instagram apparently, I just learned. Uh, so check that out as well. <laughs> Uh, it's probably at Two Real Games or something along those lines. It is something along those lines. Go all right, cool. So, Two Real Games, we're all over the place uh, on all them social meds. Uh, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. 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 I'm a lawyer! <laughs> I'm a <shoe. laughs>